What's going on guys, Chris back with another video. Before anything, I gotta apologize. The video looks like shit, I probably sound like shit, there's probably noise in the background. I've been so busy, I just moved back into school, but I need to make you guys a video today talking about SmackDown Live. I'm bringing you the three NXT call-ups that should be in for SmackDown Live. So we're gonna kick things off with number three. I had to go Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. I know that's one spot, but it's two people. The reason why I went Billy Kay and Peyton Royce was because SmackDown Live really doesn't need the big name women's wrestlers. I mean, they already have Charlotte, who is a huge name. They have Becky Lynch, Natalia, Naomi. But SmackDown Live always capitalized on their depth. They were never really about the big names like Raw is. Raw is really top heavy. SmackDown Live has always been depth. That's why they had the money in the bank. That's why they did all that. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce would capitalize being on the brand with depth. Put them there, they'll be totally fine working with a bigger group instead of having to carry a show. In my opinion, you then have Asuka go to Raw and it saves SmackDown Live because Asuka going to SmackDown Live, I'm not the biggest Asuka fan, but she would kind of run roughshod over the whole division and that then becomes top heavy. Raw is already top heavy, keep it the same. You have the bigger, stronger individual names on Raw, then you have a more level playing field on SmackDown. The land of opportunity and it all just works out so much better so for number three i went billy k and peyton royce number two alistair black i so bad wanted to put andrade cien almas in this spot but i didn't just because he's gonna be in nxt probably for a little while longer alistair black has been amazing i wouldn't be surprised if he's on the main roster in the near future. The reason why I went with Aleister Black, other than him being amazing, is simply because of his versatility. To be honest, he's not a heel or a face. I guess technically he's a face because he just feuded with Hideo Tommy, but he also had a match with Chris Hero, aka Cassius Ono. In a sense, he's really an in-betweener. So that's perfect for SmackDown Live. You don't have someone who's a strict heel like a Andrade Cien Almas. You don't have someone that's a complete baby face going onto the brand. And you also just brought Bobby Roode onto SmackDown, who's going as a face. So you add Aleister Black, he's kind of an in-betweener. He can work as a heel, he can work as a face. There's not much to worry about a guy like Aleister Black. He's a beast, he's going to be a beast for a long time. I don't know what it is about him, but I absolutely love him. I was going to put him number one, but I had to put something else at number one just for other reasons. But Aleister Black, I can't wait for him to be on the main roster. Another reason why I put him on SmackDown and why I think he should be in the mix for going to SmackDown is because I do not want him going into the Cruiserweight division. There was rumors about it a little while ago that he would go into the 205 division. This guy is money. Do not waste him in the 205 Live division. Even though I kind of like the 205 Live division way more than a lot of other people, don't waste Aleister Black in that division. Put him on SmackDown Live have him do his thing it'll be absolutely awesome the number one person or should i say people that should be going to smackdown live is the authors of pain i don't want the authors of pain going over to raw because raw already has the club they have the revival even though the revival are hurt and they have sheamus and cesaro as strong heel tag teams smackdown on the flip side mainly has the Usos as a heel. I think the Usos and the Authors of Pain can still work as both of them being heels, but Raw would become too heel heavy if they went to Raw. Put the Authors of Pain on SmackDown, I mean, they could be the ones who secretly were attacking uh, Fandango and Tyler Breeze. The new foreign team of Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin are obviously face also, so that's another face into the mix. And then you have the New Day, obviously, as the main faces for SmackDown Live. And I also forgot the Hype Bros are still a team, so they're on SmackDown Live. They had the Colognes, who knows what happened to them. To be honest, I think one of them got released. I don't even know. They, To be honest, they both might not even be there anymore. I truly don't know. But SmackDown Live could use another strong heel tag team. While the Usos have been great, and I love the Usos, there needs to be another team in the mix. 
So I'm thinking the Authors of Pain are the number one options to go there. They just lost their tag team titles in NXT, so they should be good to go to go to the main roster. They've looked great. Nothing would be better than if the New Day defeated the Usos and the Authors of Pain were the next ones in line, because then you can go with the Usos doing something with Tyler Breeze and Fandango, or even Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, whatever. Adding just one more team to the mix on SmackDown Live would make everything spectacular. You'll have actual depth in the division, and it'll be great. Everything will click. So for number one, I'm going with the Authors of Pain to go to SmackDown Live. So those are the three top call-ups in my mind on who should go to SmackDown Live from NXT. I want you to leave a comment down below on who you think should be called up to SmackDown Live from the NXT brand. Once again, I apologize for the quality of the video, the lighting, the audio, it's all probably shit. I've been so busy, but I could not wait to find the time and record this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, like every other video you see. Make sure you check out Bap Yard Wrestling, the best wrestling on YouTube today. I'm Chris from Fick and Angie. Thank you for watching.